And our dinosaur of the day is Gryposaurus, which was a request from Canadian Trodon via YouTube. So thanks. <laughs> That's a good name. The name Gryposaurus means a hook nose lizard, and it's sometimes been translated as griffin lizard. Lawrence Lamb described Gryposaurus in 1914, and when he named it, he was referencing its nasal arch, which resembled a griffin. It had a narrow, arching nasal hump that some have described as like a Roman nose. Like my nose. <laughs> I think it might have been bigger. <laughs> Probably. My nose is pretty big, though. <laughs> the term Gryposaurus sometimes used for hadrosaurs with nasal arches. Gryposaurus lived in the late Cretaceous in North America, and it was found in Dinosaur Park Formation in Alberta, Canada, Two Medicine Formation in Montana, and Kaiparowitz Formation in Utah. It's similar to Cretosaurus, and for a while it was thought that they were synonyms. There's a long history between them. The first fossils were collected in 1913, by George Sternberg from Dinosaur Park Formation in Alberta, and they found a skull and a partial skeleton. And multiple skulls and some skeletons and some skin impressions have been found. A few years before the Gryposaurus find, in 1910, Barnum Brown had found and described a partial skull from New Mexico and called it Cretosaurus navajovius. Brown's specimen didn't have a snout, so he restored it based on Anatotitan, which now is also known as Edmontosaurus, and we talked about that back in episode 129. And so it had this flathead. Lamb described Gryposaurus differently, though. He focused on the nasal crest. And in 1916, the Cretosaurus skull was remade to have this nasal arch, and both Barnum Brown and Charles Gilmore suggested that the two were synonyms. This influenced William Park's decision to name a nearly complete skeleton found in dinosaur park formation, Critosaurus incurvimanus, instead of Gryposaurus incurvimanus. But he let the type species, Gryposaurus notabilis, stay as its own genus. Parks considered Gryposaurus to be a junior synonym of Critosaurus. It's hard to compare Cretosaurus incurvimanus and Gryposaurus notabilis because Cretosaurus incurvimanus is missing part of the front of its skull, so we don't see the full nasal arch. That's the most important part. In this case, yeah. Mm -hmm. Cretosaurus is only known from partial remains, and it seems very similar to Gryposaurus, except that it lives a little bit later than Gryposaurus. And this is based on the slightly younger formation where it was found. In 1942, Lull and Wright published a monograph on hadrosaurs and said that Cretosaurus and Gryposaurus were the same. But then in the 1990s, some scientists questioned Cretosaurus navajovius. There's limited material of it compared to other hadrosaurs, and so some think that the two genera are actually different. Some scientists, such as Jack Horner, have suggested that hadrosaurus is the same as Gryposaurus and Cretosaurus. This was a common hypothesis in the 70s and the 80s. And as we've discussed, Jack Horner is a well-known lumper. <laughs> the lumpiest. <laughs> <laughs> but in 1990, Jack Horner changed his mind and said Gryposaurus was its own genera. Oof, twist. Yeah. And most scientists now think that Hadrosaurus and Gryposaurus have differences in their upper arms and iliums. Hmm? Horner described the specimens of a second species of Gryposaurus, Gryposaurus latidens. And this is based on two parts of a skeleton that was collected in 1916 for the American Museum of Natural History. There's also bone bed material. So there's three valid species of Gryposaurus. Gryposaurus notabilis, Gryposaurus latidens, Gryposaurus monumentensis, which I'll get to in a little bit. There could be even four to five species, depending on who you ask. As I mentioned, the type species is Gryposaurus notabilis. Gryposaurus latidens has an informal name, Hadrosaurus, and that was used <laughs> early on, but it's no longer used. I kind of like that, Hadrosaurus. Yeah, I guess that goes along with the idea of Hadrosaurus being the same. I don't, I don't really know where it came from. Hmm. So there's a possible fourth Gryposaurus species. There's Gryposaurus alsatai, which was found in the Javelina Formation. Stephanosaurus marginatus was once considered to be a possible Cretosaurus species when Cretosaurus and Gryposaurus were considered synonymous, but now that's considered to be dubious. Jack Horner also created the new combination of Gryposaurus and Curvimanus. Gryposaurus has been found in various places, including Alberta, Utah, Montana, possibly Texas, so it had a really large geographical range. The genera lasted for at least 5 million years, which is a lot longer than most other taxon in Hadrosauridae, except for Edmontosaurus. Hmm. 
And Gripsaurus latitans is from the lower two medicine formation in Montana and lived about 4 million years before other Gripsaurus species appeared, Notabilis and Incurvamanus. Monumentensis is about 1 to 2 million years younger than Notabilis and Incurvamanus. Gripsaurus monumentensis was named in 2007 by Natural History Museum of Utah paleontologists, and Scott Sampson called it the, quote, Arnold Schwarzenegger of duck-billed dinosaurs. What does that mean? Well... It had a very robust skull. Well, let me go back a little bit. The fossils were found in Utah, a skull and a partial skeleton, and those were named Gribosaurus monumentensis because it was found in the Grand Staircase Escalante National Monument. And researchers first found this in 2003. So it had this robust skull and thick bones in its limbs. It also had big jaws so it could eat really tough plant material. And it had 300 teeth in its mouth for eating but it had a lot of replacement teeth, so at any time it may have had more than 800 teeth. And that's, I guess, the gist of it. It was just big. Hmm. I guess Arnold Schwarzenegger is pretty big and robust. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Terminator, right? Yeah. So Gryphosaurus was both bipedal and quadrupedal, and it ate a variety of plants and could eat food on the ground, as well as food that was up to 13 feet or 4 meters off the ground. It ground its food, similar to chewing, and it cropped vegetation first with its beak. Also had this cheek-like organ to keep food in its mouth. As Gryposaurus grew, its nasal arch got bigger. The arch was over an enlarged nasal opening, which may have held soft tissue. And it was probably covered by thick keratinized skin, or had a cartilaginous extension. The nasal arch may have been for fighting each other, or for identifying species, or for sexual dimorphism. The nasal arch may have also been used to help push or butt in contests, and it may have had inflatable air sacs as visual and audio signals. Gryposaurus was about 30 feet or 9 meters long, and it had scales along the midline of its back, and these were pyramidal and ridged scales. It's a saurolophene hadrosaurid, which is a subfamily of hadrosaurs with hollow crests on their heads. Like Parasaurolophus? <laughs> A Gryposaurus was for a while considered to be a hadrosaurine, but then hadrosaurus was found to be different from other dinosaurs classified as hadrosaurines. So hadrosaurus was given a place beneath hadrosauridae, but then hadrosaurine could no longer be used because it didn't include hadrosaurus. Makes sense. So the next oldest genus in that group, Sauralophus, became the type genus of Sauralophinae, and now Gryposaurus is considered to be a Sauralophene. Gryposaurus probably lived on a floodplain with swamps, ponds, lakes, and a wet and humid climate, and it may prefer being by the river. Other dinosaurs that lived in the same time and place include Centrosaurus, Ancorithosaurus, Dromaeosaurids, Troodontids, Ornithomimids, and Chylosaurids, Tyrannosaurids, such as Albertosaurus, Parasaurolophus, and Ceratopsians, such as Utah Ceratops. That's a pretty good collection. Yeah. Good area to live in, apparently. Or bad. <laughs> well, well, they, yeah. they also lived among sharks and rays, frogs, salamanders, turtles, lizards, crocodilians, and early mammals. There's marsupials and insectivores. So quite a happening place. Where Gryposaurus lived was a relatively small area, and there were other hadrosaur species around at the same time and place, but they didn't seem to intermingle, and it's unclear why, since there were no known physical barriers like mountains to get in their way. It's also not clear how such a relatively small area supported so many large herbivores. So one hypothesis is that hadrosaurs and other large herbivores had slower metabolisms, or maybe there were large amounts of plants to eat, or the climate in the area known as West America varied across latitudes. So it's possible that plants in different areas would have been different, and that's why dinosaurs may not have mixed. 